All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Lions. Now, if you did not know, last season, their defense was the youngest in the entire National Football League. And in general, they had one of the youngest teams in NFL history. So what did they do? All right. Well, they bring in solid veterans on both sides of the football. And even though we're barely into the offseason, we're barely into mandatory mini camps, we've already been seeing these veterans pay off dividends. So some notable names that they brought in through free agency or the offseason in general include CJ Gardner Johnson, Cameron Sutton. You brought in David Montgomery. You brought in Marvin Jones Jr. You re-signed Alex Anzalone. And one thing I've really been gathering since the Lions offseason has, you know, or just the NFL offseason has picked up as far as, you know, OTAs, mandatory minicamp, et cetera, et cetera. These veterans are making an impact. And that's why I wanted to just pinpoint right away. They had the youngest defense last year. It wasn't even really close. And although the statistics would tell you, uh, you know, the Lions defense gave up 25 points per game, we can pinpoint the second half of the season where Detroit was not supposed to go nine and eight, especially after starting one and six. It's just super impressive. And I've loved what I've been seeing from mini camps, OTAs, whatever it is on the Lions side. And we're going to dive into it a little bit in today's video. Before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Let's try and get this video to 250 likes. That would mean the world to me. But, you know, two names or actually four names I've really been seeing so far in minicamp specifically and OTAs, including are a couple of veteran names, Alex Anzalone, Marvin Jones Jr., Cam Sutton, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson. We've already heard about how C.J. Gardner-Johnson's intensity has already trickled down to players across the entire defense. And I just want to say one quick thing. Since day one, Troy Weaver, Campbell, the whole staff, they've done a great job at bringing in specific veterans on their team to kind of, you know, so on, trickle down to your younger talent. But Dan Campbell has mentioned in the secondary, that's one of his regrets. That's one of the things he wished he did better. So when we brought in, or when we talked about bringing in C.J. Gardner-Johnson, obviously, you know, a ball hawk, he's a phenomenal secondary player. So he's going to make a huge impact on the field, but he's also going to make an impact on these young cats. And one guy we've really seen and we've really heard a lot of great things about after his rookie season, but specifically this summer, is Mr. Kirby Joseph. You know, I really think this Lions team added complete animals. And we've seen, we've heard this time and time again from current players. Ali McNeil. You know, I haven't talked about McNeil enough on this channel. Last season, he played and started in all 17 games, 41 combined tackles. I think he's going to truly break out for this Lions defense next season. But we go, we, we keep circling back to having one of the youngest defenses in 2022. Having guys like Ali McNeil, even though he's just 23 years old, he's only been in the league for two seasons, he's been through a lot. You know, the Lions have changed a lot in the past three off seasons specifically. And I think Ali McNeil is just going to truly break out. So Cam Sutton, Alex Anzalone, these guys just being in their presence is doing it's gonna do a lot and it's doing a lot we've heard it from these rookie players we've heard it from these young cats and it reminds me of jared goff and marvin jones jr so evidently or apparently i should say since marvin jones jr has joined the detroit lions he just moves with such a purpose and you know it's gonna pay off on these young cats and i'm looking specifically at mr jameson williams because apparently jameson has not had the best start to the summer we know last year was he, did, he was injured. He tore his ACL in the championship game a couple of seasons ago. So if we flash back to one year ago, Jameson Williams wasn't even here. You know, very limited when you tore your ACL a couple of months before, very little you can do. So apparently Jameson has struggled a little bit, but Marvin Jones Jr. and Jared Goff have pretty much immediate chemistry, right? I think that's going to pay off for cats like Jameson Williams. We've also heard about Jameer Gibbs being important you know, catching the ball. Apparently he's also just like Jameson Williams dealt with some drops, but it's summer, man. It's June 8th. 
you know, what are we, like three months away from the start of the NFL season. I'm not too worried about some of these young cats, whether you're a rookie or you've been in the league for a season like Jameson, you know, having drop issues or just, you know, trying to build that rapport. These are things that take time. I know Jameson did play, what was it, the final six games of last season, but building that chemistry with your quarterback playing six games, very, very limited snaps. Like I'm talking single digit snap counts the entire six games you played. It's hard to build that rapport. It's hard to build that chemistry. So that's why this summer is so important. They're not, the Lions are not taking any steps back here. You know, I, I don't think any Lions fans are worried or concerned about some of their younger cats, you know, trying to acclimate to the NFL, trying to acclimate to these practices. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. And it gets me reminded, it gets me thinking of where Detroit currently stands. Once again, the Detroit Lions last season were not supposed to go nine and eight. Now, you might have some Lions fans or some NFL analysts that saw this coming. A lot of Lions fans, you know, see the breakout. They saw the potential. But a nine and eight season after starting one and six, nobody really predicted that. So it's important to keep in mind the Detroit Lions, they're not ahead of schedule. And it sounds crazy. It actually almost sounds like a dig when I say that. They're perfectly on schedule. And that's what makes them so terrifying for the NFL. Like, it's not boom or bust. If you don't win the Super Bowl this upcoming season, the Detroit Lions future is screwed. It's nothing like that in the slightest of forms. Not even the slightest of forms. So it's important to keep all of this in mind judging expectations like for me personally i see the detroit lions at least winning 10 games next season if we're being quite frank here i see them winning 11 or 12 games this is coming from a cheesehead this is a packer fan i'm not necessarily thrilled at the idea that detroit is going to just like you did last year kind of obliterate our team next year and for years to come but it's important to note that brad holmes Troy Weaver, Brad Holmes, oh my goodness, the GM of the Detroit Pistons, yeah, there we go, Troy Weaver, the GM of the Detroit Lions, and Dan Campbell, they have a vision, they have a plan, and we really kind of saw it come into fruition this past offseason at the end of last year, this Lions team is going to be so different than they were at the start of last season. They already are in such a better place than they were at this time last summer, early on into your camps. I'm really excited. I'm really bullish about the Detroit Lions. And just to finish it off, talking about Jared Goff, Dan Campbell and the Lions coaches, the Lions players, Lions fans love where Jared Goff is. You know, I just saw a quote from Dan Campbell saying, this isn't the, the, the Los Angeles Rams or the St. Louis Rams. This isn't the Rams Jared Goff that we saw. This is a new Jared Goff. And we saw it last season. Jared Goff had a phenomenal year. 29 touchdowns, seven interceptions, completion percentage of 65%. He threw for over 260 yards per game. Well, <laughs> Detroit only improved, whether it was with your running game, your receiving game, including tight ends, they've just improved. And the Detroit Lions next year are going to look severely, severely better, which is crazy because they looked great to end the season. So that's really it for today. I just kind of wanted to keep you guys up to date with what's going on in mandatory mini camps right now. Hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this Lions team down below, and I'll see you guys later.